But some of us who went to predominantly black neighborhoods, predominantly black areas, had a little something. We learned about this. I'm very familiar with that anthem. I'm very familiar with Juneteenth because we learned about it. Y'all need to catch up. Get woke. Welcome back to my channel. Shantae said a thing because uh, you already know um, this little miss thing stays saying things. <laughs> All right, today's topic gonna be a quick video. We talk about the whole black national anthem thing. All I gotta say is uh, yes. <laughs> Y'all gonna stay mad because <laughs> they doing it anyways. <laughs> I absolutely love that they're playing the black national anthem. That anthem needs recognition. And for the people saying, oh, we don't need a black national anthem. Well, guess what? Before you heard about it just now, it existed like over 20 years ago. Actually, correction, it existed almost a hundred years ago. Actually, over a hundred years ago, it actually existed. And for those of you like myself who went to a majority black school, like I'm talking about like 99% of everyone that went to your school was black. We've heard that song all the time. Like, <laughs> this is not new for us. For those of you who went to mixed schools or majority white schools, y'all ain't hear about stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you, my, my school, my, especially my elementary school, they taught us about black history stuff. Like, the black national anthem, they told us the history of it and everything like that, where it came from, the poem it originally came from in the 1800s. And how it was first sung publicly in like the early 1900s. Yeah, this is not news. It's always people, some people are getting outraged because like, oh, we don't need one. We don't need one. The, you know, this is racist. You no, know, what if we had a white national anthem? Y'all know the original one is the white national anthem, right? Like, no, it's for everybody. Let me not go off. <laughs> but anyway, so they're playing the Black National Anthem right before the National Anthem. So a lot of people are mad. Stay mad. Oh, well, they still doing it. And people are saying, oh, forget the NFL. Y'all said the same thing with Colin Kaepernick, but y'all still came back, though. So, like, what? <laughs> you already said you were uh, not coming back, and you still did anyway. And for the record... The Black National Anthem isn't something that was just conveniently made up just to, like, cause ruckus or whatever. Like, the things I've read in the comments on, I've watched a couple of videos first to see what other people were saying, and just, like, ridiculous. Oh, it's so racist, and oh, the national, is only one national anthem, it's for everybody. Like, dude, do y'all even know when that anthem was written? It was not for us. Like, seriously, we were not included in that. <sighs> Same thing with Independence Day, the 4th of July. We were not included in that. People who look like me were not included. We were not free. Like, what is wrong with you people? It's just, it reminds me of that episode. I saw a clip. I'll, I'll put it in here. But it reminds me of that clip um, of the Golden Girls where she was so talking about how the southern flag was her heritage blah 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 whatever and you know she has so many great memories and then the guy explaining like hey you have great memories but you don't understand what that means to me and it's just like it's the same thing like you got great memories but not the rest of us oh wait, wait up you're not hanging that flag in here well of course i am blanche do you know what this flag represents this flag belonged to big, big granddaddy Hollinsworth. He used to bring it to all our fine old southern family picnics where all the cousins would gather. Everybody was courteous and mannerly, and gentlemen would ask ladies for the favor of a dance. And Cousin Rex would be home on vacation from Colonel Bob's school for bad boys. <laughs> Wait a minute, now I get it. This is just good old-fashioned fun. Yeah! Okay, we'll say. How about on Tuesday nights we hang the Nazi flag, hire an oompa band, and dress you up like Eva Braun? This is not the same as the Nazi flag. Yeah, well, it is to me, Blanche. 
Look, when you look at this flag, you see some southern fairy tale with a guy who looks like Burl Ives dressed in a white suit, tipping his hat to you, saying, Evening, Miss Blanche. Evening. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Roland. You were making a point. That's not funny, Blanche. Well, that's ancient history, and you know it. Things aren't like that anymore. You did the right thing, Rose. I did? I did the right thing. I did? Yeah. Sometimes what you believe is more important than business. Although what some people believe is unbelievable. Now, Roland, I am not some kind of bigot because I love this flag and I resent that implication. You just stop that right now. Oh, yes, ma'am, Miss Devereaux. Oh, Roland don't want to cause you no trouble at all. You hold on to that one. He's a good one. What did you say? He's a good one. Roland. Wait. Hey, Roland. I don't feel like that woman in there. I don't feel that way at all. But can't you see, Blanche, that flag ties what you believe and what she believes together. Look, I'm telling you, the legacy of that flag is alive every time I walk down the street with a group of my friends and I see a white person cross over to the other side because they're afraid. Or look, when I'm in the elevator with somebody like you and you're all huddled over in the corner wondering what I'm going to do, sometimes I just want to go, Back there! Oh. <laughs> just to break the tension. So please don't tell me about that flag. I've battled that flag all my life. Look, Roland, I'm sorry. I am sorry for everything you have been through. But what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to think about all my family, all my friends? All right. When I was in school, maybe I was a little less sensitive than I could have been. But... <laughs> Yeah, but I was just doing what all my friends were doing. They were my friends. And we were just acting like everybody we knew acted. Oh. And then that, when I had my first baby, well, the hospital was packed, and, uh, and I had to share a room with a young black woman. George made a big stink about the accommodation she had to have heard him. I know her baby was every bit as cute as mine. Cuter, in fact. Rebecca was an ugly baby. <laughs> Turned out fine. Ugly baby. <laughs> you can get an idea of how she looked if you catch Sophia some morning with her teeth out. <laughs> the point is, what am I supposed to do and think about my family now? What am I supposed to, to think about all those people I love? What am I supposed to think about me? Everything I grew up believing in, all my wonderful memories, that they're, they're all tarnished now by... Oh, God. <laughs> by the truth. I owe you an apology. No, I don't owe you that. Will you stay? Blanche, you really have to start listening to me when I tell you something is bothering me. And I'll try to understand why some of these things mean so much to you. Look, the whole world is messed up right now, and I would like to see that get better. But in order for that to happen, white people are going to have to start making positive assumptions when they see people of color. And people of color could make positive assumptions when they see white people. Look, long story short, because I can go on and on and, like, analyze every video I say and, like, counteract. I'm not going to do all that. Pretty much this, you're right, those people who are um, nay against it, and there are a lot of black people saying against it, and some black men saying that they get it, but it's not going to change anything, and that is true. It really is not going to change any laws, but saying that Black Lives Matter is focusing on changing this and not changing real laws is ridiculous. It literally is only a Google search away to realize all the actual changes Black Lives Matter has done. Y'all need to stop thinking that black people can't multitask. We can do multiple things at the same time. And FYI, Black Lives Matter had nothing to do with the NFL's decisions to do that. Like, y'all need to stop. And then accusing them of pandering. Yeah, that might be true. They might be actually be pandering. But they might also be getting it like, yo... Um, all the other dude wanted to do was kneel and have a conversation, Colin Kaepernick. Y'all got hella mad, and now it exploded a couple of years later to this, when we could have had this conversation years ago, and maybe George Floyd and so many others could be alive, because we've already had the conversation. These things could have already been implemented years ago.
when Colin Kaepi just said he wanted to have the conversation. But now we're having the conversation now because y'all stayed mad. Y'all didn't even care to listen and just kept making about a flag. Now y'all making it about a song as well? Like, what? Oh, oh my God, they're playing the Black National Anthem. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. The game is ruined. What? It's not even that big of a deal. My perspective of it is that they're doing it, sure, maybe to say that they're sorry, um, that they weren't listening before because we're at a climax right now to say, hey, you know what? Let's bring, let's let, let's let our black brothers and sisters know that we're listening now. We see you now. We're, we're open ears. Are they actually going to make a lot of changes? Who knows what other stuff they're going to do? Are they going to allow play, players to kneel? Um, it doesn't matter if they're playing the Black National Anthem or not. We still doing that. We're still going to be speaking out and asking y'all to listen because we're not going to stop talking. And the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is the actual title of it, we're going to keep lifting our voices and saying, okay? We're not going anywhere. And let's be real. If we just, long story short, in like 10 years, and they're still doing this in 10 years from now, the next generation is going to see this as normal. Like, oh, this is just part of football. A lot of people don't like change, which is why there's so much pushback from people on the other side uh, against Black Lives Matter and then trying to undermine it. Like, like literally just left and right, just especially the ridiculous stuff. Like, oh, y'all need to focus on it. Y'all need to focus on it. We are. We have been focused on it. It's just now... We're focusing on this thing as number one. Doesn't mean two, three, four, five, six, eight, eighteen other different things on the agenda is not having any focus. We're still focusing on those things. The programs we set up to help people within the poorer communities of the black community, those still exist. We're still raising money. We're still trying to improve them. Just because this is center of attention right now for like the first time ever in all of American history. Doesn't mean everything else um, is going out the window. And this is just another tactic for people on the opposite side to try to undermine the movement by saying, focus on this. And if we, and let's be honest, if we stop talking about police brutality, like 100%, no one spoke about it. And like we talked about all the other stuff they say we should be focusing on, then they would bring up something else to say, oh, we should focus on this. And if we stop and focus on that, they'll just bring up, no, that's, so it makes absolutely no sense. So, it doesn't matter that you guys don't want to help. We're going to keep pushing forward. You can keep pushing back or just accept it and help us. Point blank, period. But whatever. I'm black. I'm proud. My fellow brothers and sisters and allies, they proud. They excited. We happy. And yeah, like I said, playing Lift Every Voice and Sing again. That, that's the actual name of the song. Something that I've been singing in school since I was in elementary school from K to sixth grade. This is a normal song I've heard every single year in school for celebrations and things like that. We learned both songs, our anthem and then the America's anthem. We learned both. Y'all did it. Y'all the ones who need to catch up. And same thing with Juneteenth. People say, oh, I've never heard this, just making it up. It existed before. It just America refused to acknowledge it. And it's just crazy to me. There are people saying, oh, the things are being made up. They're not being made up. This is literally our history. You're not taught this in school. We are. And some of us still aren't. Some of us didn't know about these things. But some of us who went to predominantly black neighborhoods, predominantly black areas, who had a little something, we learned about this. I'm very familiar with that anthem. I'm very familiar with Juneteenth because we learned about it. Y'all need to catch up. Get woke. Oh, and by the way, before I sign off on this video, don't forget that Breonna Taylor and Vanessa Guillen, um, their murderers are still not brought to justice, and we need to make sure that happens this year. Okay? Bye! <laughs>my facebook my tweeters my instagrammies and the platform you're on now youtube
or Patreon if you want to donate a little. And uh, make sure you subscribe, like, follow, all of that stuff. Comment below. Hey guys, real quick, come and check out my Patreon. I have specialized tiers for both my main channel, Shantae Did A Thing, with all my travel content, with specialized tiers for my second channel, my commentary channel, Shantae Said A Thing. So if you would like to support either channel, definitely head on over and check me out. I update regularly in both tiers, so definitely head on and check out what you want me to do next.